Hello, my name is Mar Pimitel. I'm one of the CAM application specialists here at Hawker Systems. And in this video, we'll be talking about how to add cutter compensation inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. So cutter compensation is an option that we put into our CAM part files that we generate in our G code to allow the operator to account for changes in the tool dimensions that are used with the, the tool paths that we generate here. So how do we add that to the software? Well, it is added to finishing operations, which means that inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS, we have that function within the contour mill operation. So let's take a look at a contour mill operation. You can find the cutter compensation parameters in the NC tab and in this lower right section here. There are two parameters that you use to control cutter compensation output in your G code files. The first is the CNC compensation section. You either set it to yes or none, basically saying yes to using cutter compensation, thus adding the code into your G code, or none, meaning it does not add cutter compensation to the output code. SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS just feeds the code into the post processor. The posted code goes onto the machine. It's for the controller on the machine to add that offset or not. And this allows it to understand, yes, it needs to add that offset, or no, it does not need to add that offset based off the cutter compensation definition. Toolpath Center is the actual code itself. Are we adding the compensation from CAMWORKS? So you can see here on the wireframe of this toolpath, that blue line represents the center of the tool. We can see here that compensation has already been added to the code here. The only thing left to do is on the controller side to actually define the offset or the wear comp, radio comp, or diameter comp, whatever it is on your controller. If we take a look at the same tool path, but with that second section turned off, meaning without compensation, now we look at the blue line. The blue line still represents the center line of that tool, but it is now riding exactly on that line there, the line representing the wall. This is the same output. In this case, though, the offset has not been added to the code. So when this code is posted, the lines of code on the machine will tell it to follow this line. It is then required for the composition to be added so it does not gouge that wall. So here, is another way you can output the code. If your controller requires the sensor line to be defined in the code, then you could do it this way. If your controller just adds compensation on top of an already offset line of code, then you can use the previous one. Let's look at those same parameters, but in the opposite. So in this next copy of the same operation, again, a contour mill operation, finishing that wall, I have it set to none and with compensation. The toolpath looks the same as the very first one. And essentially it is. The lines of code will be the same. The only difference here is that it is not adding cutter compensation to the code, which means that your controller does not need to add anything different to the, to the toolpath itself. Your operator does not need to change anything uh, on the controller side, but they do need to use a tool of the exact size defined inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. Otherwise, this will either overcut or undercut depending on uh, which tool size they're using. Most likely it will undercut because again, cutter compensation is usually to account for the fact that you're using a reground tool that has a smaller diameter than was defined inside the software. So this is an exact line of code. The tool path will follow this exact line here. It is up to the operator to put in the proper diameter of tool called out here. In this case, a half inch diameter tool to match this one quarter inch offset from that wall. And then finally, if everything is turned off, what we can see is it's set to none, so there's no cutter compensation code in the G code, and it is not adding the compensation on screen here. This is the center line of the tool engaging with that wall itself. It'll follow that exact line. This will gouge that wall, and there's nothing that can be done. There's no control uh, on the controller that would change that. This setting right here is not appropriate for this application, but this exact setting here would be for your engraving operations, where you want the center line of the tool to follow the exact path that you've detailed inside of the CAM software. Or this could be following a sketch line that you've drawn down the center of a slot or the center of an all brown hole. Again, in programming, we can do lots of things. And this case right here is allowing us to follow the dead center of that line rather than adding any kind of offsets or compensation. Now let's take a look at those in simulation to see what that might actually look like on the machine. And in simulation, I'm gonna do one operation at a time just to highlight the differences or the similarities. So if we take a look at 
Compensation, yes, with compensation. The, the half inch tool will come down, it machines the wall, and that's it. Compensation on without compensation. So in this case, cutter comp is engaged, and the tool path is just outputting code for the center line of the tool. But because it is using cutter comp, again, we just ride along that wall exactly. We are not gouging that wall. So this is how it would run on the machine. In the third operation, compensation is set to none and with compensation, meaning that the code we output has lines of code that tell the center line of the tool to follow exactly uh, an offset path here. And again, we can see we are just finishing that wall, same as what the first three did. Now let's take a look at the final example where compensation is set to none, so no cutter compensation is being output in the G code, and without the compensation being added to the lines of code. So the center line of the tool will follow the exact path given. This will now gouge the wall. But again, this last setting is perfect for your engraving operations or any tool path where you're trying to use the center of the tool to follow the path. One last item to address. If you are adding compensation, meaning you have checked this box to yes, it is very important to add some sort of linear movement to your lead in and lead out moves. This allows the controller on the machine to recognize the compensation, to calculate the proper offset that you have defined with your cutter compensation. And it's best to make sure that it is more than the radius of the tool. You want to give that tool enough room to see that linear move to engage the cutter compensation. That's why the default set inside SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS is 52% of the tool diameter. So 50 or greater is a good number. Now there are also some controllers out there that require an even greater number. So with respect to counter compensation, it's best that you understand how your controller on your CNC works so that you can best put the parameters in here, save those parameters back to the TechDB and default it for all your finishing operations and your contour mill operations. Any questions on this or anything else, give us a call at the phone number found on our website and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.